Anagia Server is a virtual machine in a data center, but also has a public interface in uh, Calafu. Sister Server is a bare metal, uh, metal uh, machine that goes back to uh, the her story of the gender changers, which uh, was more, mainly focused on self-education and uh, base, uh, based on identity politics. And Lever Burns is a bare metal micro machine. And yes, if you visit it, uh, you have to allow uh, the risk. Uh, there is no certificate, but it is uh, trustworthy because we know who is uh, running uh, the server. So we call ourselves feminist servers uh, with distributed services and uh, we inhabit uh, affective infrastructures. And maybe some people would ask themselves, uh, what is this uh, a feminist server? And I think it's good uh, to uh, read uh, the F feminist server manifesto 0 0.0.1. Uh, uh, it's from the feminist server um, summit. Uh, already a couple of years ago, and some of us also uh, were involved in the Transhack Feminist event in uh, Calafu. Each of these servers um, will define themselves differently and have different ways to um, create uh, the narrative. And um, each of us also have uh, speculative uh, future futures. So this panel advocates for a feminist internet and uh, the need uh, to empower uh, its communities. However, our communities lack uh, structural resources to enable feminist hosting platforms to become sustainable in a longer term. So we ask together in this panel why and how to. Um, so hello, uh, we are OOO, uh, we are uh, part as a moderator uh, for this panel and also uh, Mara is uh, joining us. And um, we would like uh, for now that the uh, different speakers we invited introduce themselves in a little two minutes and uh, also give resonance uh, to uh, the uh, topic of uh, the panel. So we would like to invite uh, Mallory Knodel to do that first. And we have a little bit of a timer next to us. So if you surpass the two minutes, somebody of us will cough uh, <laughs> gently. <laughs> yes. So hello, uh, Mar Mallory, can you take over the microphone? Yes. And is it okay that I use video? Um, nobody else was, but I'm happy to while I'm speaking anyway. So um, thanks very much for inviting me to this panel. Um, it's been really nice to to organize this. Um, talking about feminist servers is one of my uh, favorite topics. So I think that's why um, I resonated with this. Uh, I myself have been a systems administrator for um, over 10 years. Um, working on a, not overtly feminist projects always. Um, and, you know, currently I'm the chief technology officer in um, Washington, D.C. at the Center for Democracy Technology. Um, it's not an overt feminist project, but there are ways that we can always find, um, you know, small small things to work on together that, that intersect with that. So that that's this is an example of that. Um, I just worked on, um, or still continue to work on, um, a research draft in the Internet Research Task Force on feminism and Internet protocols that um, has been an ongoing effort or labor of love for some years and always looking for collaborators or folks that have insights into how we can sort of take the, the standard space and also then look at the um, societal standards things that take a principled approach to how to design technology and, um, and learn something from them. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Mara. So yeah, I, I think just in general, um, having always been um, a feminist activist and also working in the technology space, it very much informs my political approach, I would say, is interne intersectional feminism. 
Um, and so that is um, why I think it's important to approach also privacy issues uh, from a feminist perspective, because I think there are some particularities that fall out of that that I think we'll get into a bit later. Thanks. Yeah, hello. I'm trying to also uh, share my camera. Yeah, it works. <laughs> uh, hello, and thanks a lot for inviting me to this panel. Um, my name is Anne Mertens, and I'm representing Anaïs Berg. Anaïs Berg is an artist name that stands for a collective uh, of humans, algorithms, and trees. It's a bit of an unusual uh, um, uh, collective. But um, it came together in uh, 2019 uh, as an artist uh, research. And for the moment, we're researching uh, how we can um, install an algo literary publishing house in which the algorithms produce automatically generated books. And the trees are of, um, the topics of the books. But the idea is that the trees also have a decision power in the, algorithm, in the algo literary publishing house. So that's a big part of uh, the research and it brings us uh, close to um, feminist theories, decolonial theories, um, yeah, the inclusion of more than humans uh, in our uh, making and thinking processes. Um, so uh, I think I'm here uh, or we're here because a few months ago, um, I sent an email um, to ask uh, if we could somehow uh, find a collaboration um, with the different uh, feminist servers. Uh, and yeah, so I'll tell you more about this later. Thanks. Nate, can you introduce yourself? Yes. So, I'm Nate, I'm a researcher, and I started to become part of and collaborate with the feminist servers, uh, Anarcha server, and also Sister Server and Lever Burns. And my interest in um, techno feminist infrastructures initially stems from reading techno feminist theory, especially the work of Donna Haraway. So I'm not strictly an artist or activist, but I'm an activist uh, academic. And if I use language that you find unnecessary, complicated, please point it out in the chat and don't let me get away with it. So technofeminism is this bundle of radical traditions questioning technologies from a gendered point of view and questioning gender as it is produced by technologies and it rejects technologies that do not work for us or work against us, uh, not only because of gender, but because of intersectional power relationships. And it also articulates the need for a different internet, a feminist internet. And one of the most radical approaches here are feminist uh, servers. And Spider Alex, who is a member of Anarcha Server, once explained it very well. And I quote, the internet is not an immaterial cyberspace. It's a network of cables, servers, and data centers. And I paraphrase to keep it short, uh, its architecture mostly follows a server client model where servers host all kinds of different services like websites and email and video platforms. And most people with personal computers are using those services as clients. But most of the servers and a lot of the software are owned by a handful of corporations and they are part of the extractivist and exploitative regime of techno-capitalism that feeds on our lives and on our data. And yet there is uh, uh, an alternative to that. There are some autonomous servers that run by their own standards and values and feminist servers are part of uh, that. Uh, I see them as an actualization of the techno feminist critique of what the internet has become. And they are uh, collectively run machines, they're self organized, they independently host their own tools. Um, and yeah, 
uh, do all kinds of stuff, maintain archives and uh, are just in general a safer space uh, online for all kinds of activism and for the arts. Um, it's a lot of work uh, and it's very precarious, but it's done by the principle of care. So for me, knowing that those infrastructures exist and that I can be part of it uh, is really incredible. And I'm glad that we gathered uh, here to talk about this. Thank you. And Madis now, I'm oh, no, sorry, Andrea, Andrea Zappa. Yeah. We are running a little bit behind time, so I think we have to really speed up the introductions if it's possible. Thank you. Hi. Um, uh, I thanks uh, for uh, this panel, and um, I participate to. Uh, okay, I'm uh, Andrea Zappa. I'm from Italy. Uh, sorry yeah, for my Italian English. I speak better uh, Italian, but <laughs> for inclusion, uh, we you, we will try to use uh, this kind of English. And uh, I um, I work in. Uh, um, communication, I studied science of communication, and, uh, but uh, in the last 10 years uh, I moved in, the, in uh, developing and uh, I work as a front-end uh, developer. Uh, for a political uh, aim, um, I meet a, a feminist group in, in the street and uh, in my activity um, I, I build a digital uh, space and uh, I, um, I experiment in a feminist server, in a sister server. Um, one uh, one uh, topic that uh, um, I spend uh, the last five years on is to learn how to build a, a physical network. Uh, mesh network, uh, most with uh, Wi-Fi antenna in countryside. So um, I address the topics of a digital divide uh, and um, and the rights of uh, communication media from the users, and also with a feminist uh, perspective of this. Uh, I I approach to the techniques. For for uh, farmers, so most for uh, uh, analogic uh, techniques, uh, most than uh, digital. Thanks. Hi all, uh, I'm turning on the camera also. Uh, I'm Madi from Madix, and uh, I put here the link of the project. So we have built Maddox because, I mean, as Nate said, we are every day uh, using technical infrastructure, not only in our personal computer, but online. So I was tired of having to ask men how to do something because the answer was <laughs> never <laughs> kind. So we decided to make it for us to Maddox is a project that aims to simplify the administration of online services and keep total control over our data. So you have all the, the services you need, the online services on your own space where nobody can access but you. And uh, so we uh, you can, with Maddox, install a lot of applications just at the click of a button. But the thing is not only that, is that uh, as somehow you still manage your own server, you go learning how it all works. And I think the difference, um, how it makes us a, a feminist provider is that we love to answer to all the doubts that people have. Um, and uh, so we can learn and understand how all this stuff works. It's not just a mystery, it's not something magic, it's something, it's just numbers, you know, and communication. So we can step by step, by step understanding how it works and so be more autonomous 
and uh, it's not like only using a uh, um, fear a uh, uh, um, privacy provider is really keeping control over your data and your applications. So we are really proud and happy to have done this. Okay, thank you already for the introduction. We just want to mention also, we use this more moment also uh, in our feminist pedagog pedagogies uh, as, a, as a test for uh, using uh, the restream function of our uh, peer tube. So uh, you can go to tube.sisterserver.net uh, uh, to test also whether uh, this panel can be restreamed. And I give the word to Mara who will introduce the first uh, questions for this panel. Yes, yeah, so th thank you all of you very much for your uh, introductory words. So we have actually four uh, main questions that they will all help to uh, think and reflect on our main theme of this panel, which is how does a feminist server uh, nurture uh, the shared realities of uh, creatives and uh, activists. And our first question is, uh, a feminist internet is a marginalized uh, framework within the digital rights movement. How can a techno-feminist critique feed the digital rights uh, movement? And uh, the question is for Mallory and the next for Nate. Yeah, so I think of this question quite a bit. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm sort of working on a draft um, in a technical community that looks at feminism and protocols, but that work is actually being done in a group that I chair that was chartered to look at human rights. So we realize that feminism is not the same framework as human rights framework, but except that there are some critical overlaps. I think on the one hand, um, and this is something that Nate mentioned much earlier, is there are, there's a, there's a, Feminism sort of understands the special um, cases of, of additional oppression. So that's across not just gender, but um, sexuality, race, class, all these different intersections that can compound our ability to have our rights realized. Um, and I think also feminism, because it isn't concerned with, um, I think human rights is concerned with, you know, uh, setting a, a baseline under which we should not go, although we realize that that's often never achieved. Um, I think feminism is in concern with that. It sort of states the world um, or, or comes up with principles or ways of seeing the world as it should be um, and doesn't necessarily lean into, I think, a common hierarchy that, that can be present. So I think where human rights, for example, can be compatible with um, an economic system like capitalism, I think feminism um, very often could not um, because of the ways in which it um, deals with equality. So while I'm, I, I realize I'm only speaking about differences, um, I do think that that is part of sort of the research and the analysis that feminists do is to find those overlaps and to be able to speak to a variety of different communities, those that are focused on racial justice, for example, which is slightly different, or social justice, um, those focused on human rights, um, those focused on democracy um, and, um, and other kinds of expressions. So that, that is the challenge. I think that's something that we always need to be striving for when we identify issues. So when it comes to privacy, since that is um, the real issue we have at hand here, um, I would say that you know, there are particular expressions of privacy um, um, the exercising of privacy that are that are different for folks who are um, targeted, marginalized because of their gender, because of their race, because of a variety of intersections. And we have to um, consider those as we're obviously building technology. Um, I'll just give one very quick example and then I want to hand it over to someone else who can speak. But this idea that, you know, we have ultimate control of very expensive devices, each individual one of us, and that this device is essentially an ex extension of ourselves. That isn't true, I think, for folks who don't have um, access to um, expensive devices, for those who live in a more communal setting, um, for those who live amongst other people with other devices. I mean, those things have massive considerations if your threat model might be 
um, coming from the person that you share home with or the person that has access to your device 24 hours a day. I mean, we have to consider that that is different for, for all of us. And so feminism might give us more of an insight into how to design um, private technology better than just looking at human rights. Um, it's just a little bit, I think human rights can be just a little bit too general, whereas um, feminism looks at the points of oppression um, and then could help to inform a way to offset um, those, pro those, those issues. So anyway, those, that's my contribution. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing what Nate has to say. Yeah, I'm just going to join in. I was going to say a lot of similar things uh, because I also think that um, uh, human and digital rights and struggle for a feminist internet are both valuable for mobilizing against online exploitation and discrimination, but they're distinct and you already said it. Uh, feminist struggles are based on the knowledges and the embodied experience of women, of lesbian, inter, trans and non-binary people living with technologies. So there are specific struggles, the struggle of finding information and adequate medical treatment, the uh, need to narrate the story of invisibilized women and queers in computer and internet history, fighting cyberbullying and hate speech. And uh, so the techno-feminist struggle is a struggle from within, it's self-organized. It's not primarily directed at the institutions or corporations, and it's not primarily a corrective to their bad politics from above, um, because it's just, uh, like you said, it's about, Mallory, it's uh, uh, radically imagining alternative futures from below and doing that together and with care. So, yeah, I think problematizing the human rights framework is this challenge of looking out for the margins and to always uh, acknowledge difference before assuming equality. And like historically, the feminist critique of privacy is a good example to demonstrate that. The privacy aims to protect all citizens equally, but uh, if we look at it, the separation of private and public turned out to work really badly for women who were deliberately confined to the domestic sphere where male domination was naturalized. And I'm talking about the uh, mostly white and middle to upper class women who organized in the second wave feminism. So yeah, the right to privacy translated into very different realities according to your ascribed gender and economic situation. And of course, with the advance of data extraction fuel techno-capitalism, a lot changed and this binary separation of public-private is a little bit outdated, but privacy concerns are uh, more pressing than ever. And um, so, yeah, I think from the techno-feminist approach, we can learn to question those individualistic uh, ways of thinking, privacy as privacy self-management, or uh, the famous privacy paradox where people seemingly uh, act against their own interests. And um, yeah, the reason why is, uh, uh, or um, how to rethink privacy in a techno-feminist way then would be to make it a techno-collective approach, considering uh, also more than human aspects, also uh, uh, issues like the environment, um, do it with care and fight asymmetric uh, power relations. And I actually see this already happening in the discourse around privacy, starts shifting towards information self-determination or even data sovereignty. And this focus on the conditions of being able to consent to the sharing of information. And I think that might be the effect of a techno-feminist critique. And so, yeah, I think there's still a lot to learn uh, and to insist in technologies that take our diverse needs and embodied experiences into account. Thank you, Nate. Uh, we can move. Uh our next question. 
So, uh, <clears throat> the next question is, what are the tools for uh, organizing our uh, workflow? Well, I, I mean our, I mean uh, in the terms of uh, having a feminist uh, servers, feminist infrastructure. So, how, what are the tools for organizing our work on these infrastructures? And uh, in general, around techno-feminist uh, uh, infrastructures, what are the terms of uh, participation uh, uh, exclusivity? And I would like to hear from uh, Madis, and then Andrea, and then Nate. Thank you. Hi. Um, <clears throat> so, basically, what we have used a lot during all our process uh, in terms of tool for organization, for organizing this workflow, has been uh, using, keeping into account all the needs that each different feminist organization have. I mean, we need to go on thinking about what everybody is facing, what they need, uh, so that we can build a useful tools, we can build a useful uh, framework. So, uh, for example, from our experience in Maddox, we, from when we started till until where we are now, we had to change our our milestones, our um, path, because of. Uh, people that were using Maddox, I mean, the community uh, told us that they had different needs that we were not keeping into account. I mean, uh, basically, uh, what we need is knowing who we are and who we are talking to and who we are working with. Um, for example, right now, I make a, 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 a practical example because maybe it's clearer. Uh, more clear. Uh, in uh, we are working a lot with South American organizations that are in most of them are in critical uh, politics situation their their country, and so most of them are very afraid with their right to be um, about attacks they could uh, receive because from sexist groups, right-wing groups, etc. So they really need some tools, security tools, to protect their website, their against their DDoS attacks and things like that. So maybe in Europe, uh, feminist groups are not so exposed to this kind of, of threat. And uh, so, I mean, for us it's very important because to have this feedback because we didn't take took this too much into account. It, you know what I mean? So if we want to if we want to, to to build infrastructure that are useful for different feminist frameworks, I mean this feedback was very useful for us. And uh, mm, the terms of participation Participation. I mean, this goes within the other. No, I, I think this answer both uh, because uh, I mean we can't build a tool that is just in our mind and it just fits into our needs. We the, the good thing is that we have a lot of mailing lists, a lot of spaces where we can share. And I, I'm old style in this sense that the old mail list is always the most useful to 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 know what's going on among us. I don't know if I answered the question, but that's that's it. Yeah, yeah, thanks. But uh, I think I, I just an extra uh, sub-question would be, uh, do you have any type of uh, decision-making in uh, your uh, foundation or uh, let's yes. say organization? Yeah. Yes, uh, yes, because when we start a new, I mean, Normally, the decision we have to take are quite, quite technical. I mean, do we add this application or this other one? And what, when we decided, we decide this all together, of course, but most, the most of the time starting from what the community asks. So that's, uh, that's why I started with the previous uh, theme. I mean, they are not decisions just among us, but of course, then we 
evaluate if it makes sense, if, if it's technically possible, if um, compared with how much it would cost in terms of money and also human resources. But most of the time we add things because the community uh, said they need, you know, so and then internally uh, we decide all together. Uh, we are not only women, there are also men, and we, I mean, we, even if, I mean, it's good because the, the decision is not only technical, it's, it's like a mix, so... Uh, and how many there are the active uh, people in your uh, uh, organization? And we are two person that work all the time, on, on the project, but then we we'll do collaboration depending on what we have to do. So we uh, collaborate with people that, I mean, they also do other things. They are not only doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, okay, thank you. I think we have to go uh, to the next uh, uh, speaker. So, Andrea, please, could you also uh, elaborate on the same question? What are the tools for organizing our workflow and decision making in feminist service? Yeah, I I speak about the feminist infrastructure, not on the server. I I follow the the idea to uh, build a feminist group, build a feminist services, and build a feminist network, uh, physical network. Okay, cables and uh, antennas and this. So I have uh, three different uh, uh, representation of the problems. Like, uh, and I try to have uh, always a, a bridge between uh, these uh, three, these uh, three organization uh, with uh, feminist uh, group that uh, uh, reclaims rights uh, in the street. Uh, we try to use a consensus method, we do meeting, and we try to respect uh, the, um, the idea of the other and uh, speak uh, enough, uh, enough, but uh, speak to arrive, uh, to take decision without a dub. So consult all the point of view to arrive to decide something. So uh, is uh, slow when you don't know a lot uh, the other people, but uh, became uh, uh, faster when uh, you know with the other and uh, when the relationship uh, is uh, a long uh, is long in the time. And uh, is the same to decide for the servers uh, in the admin side, and uh, is the same to decide in the network. In the network, uh, we have uh, we have not an admin side. We have uh, uh, users uh, that uh, contribute uh, to build uh, their network, and so um, decide uh, with uh, consensus method is something that needs uh, that you self doubt to you. So all the people that uh, uh, participate needs uh, to study, and uh, a lot of time uh, together we need uh, to take lessons. Uh, because uh, we live uh, in, uh, in not uh, in the best world possible. We don't live in a society where census method is used. And so um, sometimes uh, we need help to keep our mind uh, in, uh, in a consensus method. Uh, another part that is really strong is uh, uh, assertive communication and uh, also not to use aggressive, passive aggressive communication that uh, it's something that uh, we put a lot of attention because uh, uh, we fight things a marginalized um, group like us, like us that we are far, some of us are farmer, are not urban, not in the city and uh, feminist. So <laughs> a good collection of uh, strange people. <laughs> And um, and um, so so it's uh, uh, we train ourselves to uh, to um, push our rights um, and um, so uh, I think that one of the most the biggest action is build for us a safe safe space 
uh, just uh, in the in the street, in the squares, uh, in the place that we uh, we stay physically, and uh, in the, in um, in our network, and uh, in uh, uh, in the server services. Um, Probably the most interesting part. Uh, no, I don't know. I, there is not an most interesting part. The three, uh, the three parts of, of the real of the services in the internet, <coughs> and the other part of be in another internet. We because we build other net uh, are uh, changing and. Um, and brings uh, results. So yeah, thank you eh, for elaborating on it. And so I, I think we have a shared common interest in our feminist infrastructures. But uh, of course, the big question is how can we sustain these feminist servers in, in terms of resources, whether it's uh, models of uh, funding or solidarity actions or uh, the membership uh, or client-based uh, relations. So how, how can we sustain uh, uh, them in terms of, of resources. Uh, uh, um, do you want to uh, say something about that? Yes, sure. Uh, oh. Yeah. But I, uh, I think it's important because I feel I, um, I talk from another uh, point of view. I think it's important to introduce a little uh, the work we do so that you have an idea of, of uh, what the um, maybe more metaphorical needs could be um, before uh, I can answer the question. Is that okay? Uh, yes, yeah. Okay, nice. So, um, yeah, I just want to uh, show you one of the, um, uh, we, the experiments we did. Uh, the idea is that um, uh, we always take into consideration this space where uh, human, vegetal, and artificial intelligences meet. And by opening this space and respecting this space uh, with all the uh, different entities involved, uh, we encounter a lot of issues. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll first show maybe an example of um, a work we did uh, when we were in uh, residency in Madrid. Uh, last year. Um, can I take the presenter's role here? Um, ooh, I don't see a way to... Maybe I just uh, paste the website and then you can... Um, uh, you can do it for me. Or is there a way to take the presenter's role? No, don't think so. Ah, yeah. Okay. Ah, no, okay. Maybe it's better just to paste uh, the, the link uh, um, that people can see it uh, from their computer. Yeah, I think it's best uh, to paste the link, uh, Anais, because we are running behind time already. Yeah, 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 no worries. Yeah. yeah. So, um, if you go to this page, then you see uh, the research we're doing. It's a one-year research, and um, I would like to show you uh, the book, uh, A Walk Along the Trees of Madrid. Um, you can click on it uh, in the um, uh, right section. Um, and there you see that you can uh, actually uh, choose what kind of uh, data you're using to generate the book, and then you can generate the book on the spot. Um, the, um, it's a Markov chain uh, writing the book, so uh, you get the, per the narrative perspective of the Markov chain, uh, where uh, the book shows the poetic process of the algorithm using um, uh, data from these novels and uh, organizing then a walk along uh, trees in, the, um, in, a, in this particular neighborhood in Madrid. Uh, the idea is um, that uh, we 
create a publishing house um, using these kind of experiments. Um, for now, uh, the website runs on a commercial server, uh, but you can imagine uh, as we are looking um, at an, in, an, an inc inclusive space, we have very different needs. Um, we would like to understand and get to know all the different algorithms. We would like to also uh, work with consent of trees, whatever that means and what kind of methodologies we need to invent for that. Um, but that also means that uh, it's important to be able to look at the carbon emission of a server, uh, to be able to do experiments with uh, more uh, alternative and ecological um, uh, energies. And um, yeah, uh, in terms of what it needs, um, it's uh, Amaïs Berg comes out of a tradition of uh, constant and domain public. Uh, constant is an organization in Brussels for, for media and arts, uh, also with a feminist uh, methodology um, approach. Uh, and so for years we have been looking at how can we use, um, uh, how can the infrastructure reflect uh, also the um, the philosophy of the organization. And so for Anais Berg, this is the same. How can the infrastructure reflect a non-extractive, um, uh, uh, safe uh, space for inclusion for uh, humans and more than humans? Um, so these are quite large questions. And we are, um, through small experiments, we are trying to find answers to this. So it's a much more playful approach. Um, uh, the, I think then uh, what the colleagues uh, before explained, and it's super impressive and uh, yeah, I admire a lot your work. Um, yeah, it's, it's trying to get together um, uh, different spaces and to make them somehow work. For the moment, we, are, uh, we decided to install a server um, on our side, uh, which will be a feminist server, but for, let's say, uh, our project. So it will not be this kind of collective server where other people can host. But I think in the long term, uh, what would be really interesting is to see how that can become part of a feminist server network um, and what that means. Uh, more than humans in this network. Uh, so um, I don't know. We are working with public funding and uh, research, mainly research funding. Um, so this allows for this kind of more uh, experimental um, approach. And uh, yeah, uh, I don't know if that's really. I mean, I think. Uh, I mean, I think you you resolved a little bit eh, from your own need eh, the to have a feminist server, mm -hmm. and actually you also are a uh, self uh, dedicated to uh, find the resources to mm. sustain it and to also expand and make uh, links within the wider feminist network. Maybe it's also, uh, back, uh, this is from an artist perspective and, uh, and, and uh, uh, wider societal uh, concerns. Um, and I think Madish is uh, with Madix, uh, there is more the server who offers services. Can you also maybe uh, um, try to uh, work on this idea of, of the resources to sustain a feminist servers? Hi, yes, of course. Uh, we uh, were uh, like, we didn't want to uh, be to precarize. I mean, all the work we do, we want it to be remunerated. So we are a little bit against the voluntary uh, framework because otherwise then we have to go and work for Google for example to, to eat so we decided to make Maddox uh, uh, like a company that could earn money itself with its activity and uh, so we give uh, services we give hosting also we do not only develop uh, software and this is how we get some income. We also um, have uh, some funding because we build projects which are basically building software or, or, or configurations uh, that are open source and free. So 
uh, we can put it at the disposal of the community and for that we receive like help some funding so this is the combination we didn't want only to to be sustained on funding because it can fail we our aim is to build uh, in our internal community people working with Maddox to be paid for their work and to be autonomous in this sense so we are not 100% yet uh, in this situation but uh, Maddox is having incomes and so I think this hybrid model is working for us and gives it gives us quite a lot of stability we started it in 19, in 19 no, 2016 and we are still alive and we are going better step by step so i can't we uh, we don't have donation because as we have are a company it sounds strange to us but this would be also if we work on free software i mean the secret for me is working and publishing all the code so all the community can use it and so you could also um activate uh, a donation model for for having money to to work on your project and melody you have any uh, ideas about uh, the sustaining uh, of uh, the feminist servers in terms of resources it's a really hard problem i think it's good to hear um maddox is trying to fix it. Um, I think that it is difficult um, to sustain. So I, I would just add that I think that there is a spectrum of, of um, funding models. I'm particularly interested in just finding uh, projects that are exciting that we can learn from that maybe are temporary. They only last a few years, but that they um, help to strengthen the movement, the feminist and technology movement more broadly because it gives us something to work on together um, that can be funded, uh, but that maybe ultimately ends. And again, like the learning goes back to the community. But um, I do think the problem of sustainability is really difficult. So, for example, one is, you know, learning how or asking a question, uh, you know, would, would feminist run VPNs be more secure? Or what are the qualities of those sorts of VPNs? If you gave, you know, feminist collectives the tools that they needed to build them and then run them and use them for a while, um, what are the particularities of that? Is it different from other activist services? Is it different from corporate services? That sort of thing. Um, and then hopefully that learning actually informs um, real developers. It, it informs funders. It informs the space. Um, gives us some more um, data credibility when we say, you know, the way that it's done um, for everyone isn't good enough. You know, those, those are the kinds of projects that I'm interested in looking at, but um, it doesn't satisfy, you know, it doesn't help you eat as, as um, Matt was saying, like, I, I have to admit that, but, um, but I think that we should be creative about trying to discover and research certain things, um, maybe within the context of more sustainable models um, but that also we need spaces to simply just play for a short period of time, uh, make something, you know, really concrete happen, um, and then try to make sure that that, um, that isn't forgotten, that that moment in time isn't forgotten. Yeah, I think that leads us to our last question. Uh, we are uh, normally it's the moment that we would open it up, and maybe we can uh, ask the question and then open it up, um, um, or r run a bit over time. Um, but uh, and what, what would we then imagine as policy or event or that could empower our our, our mission and? Um, or co find collaborations with uh, like-minded political allies, aligned uh, uh, projects. Uh, can can uh, Anna try to say something about it? Yes. Um, so uh, yeah, one of the um, ideas <laughs> that um, a colleague of the collective uh, came up with, uh, Guillaume. Um, uh, Snezovic is uh, an, uh, a kind of uh, book lounge performance <laughs> uh, for the publishing house where um, we would uh, 
uh, have a server on a Raspberry Pi. Um, and uh, this server would run either on solar power or on uh, uh, the idea was actually more uh, to have it run on, on uh, the wood, the wood burning of an old tree and um, to have the book lounge uh, uh, last as long as uh, the energy is there. So when the energy is gone, then the book lounge is over and the server is dead. So that's, it's, a, it's a very playful uh, example, but I think it might be an interesting experience. Yeah, it's like uh, imagination from an artist perspective. Maybe also Andrea, who is on the streets and within the community and uh, politicizing her activity, can also imagine uh, something. I I like uh, I think so that we have uh, to do a big work on um, on our on uh, learning skills and uh, um, consciousness about uh, feminist and intersection and uh, so um, like we need a lot of like internet in this moment is more a big uh, patriarchy propaganda and uh, we need a lot of other places uh, that uh, where uh, where uh, spread different culture so uh, i li i believe that the meet in person is the best but uh, yeah i i need, i know also that uh, because build more trust and it's better but uh, i know that it's difficult and uh, I'm really happy of the experiment of today about uh, restreaming in uh, Peercast. Uh, I would like to spend one, two words about uh, the fact that uh, is peer-to-peer -peer and uh, is a technology that uh, is developed to, to um, uh, restream uh, big uh, contents but uh, with uh, less uh, bandwidth. Uh, using uh, a bit of bandwidth from the users, uh, every user uses a bit of, ban a bit of bandwidth, uh, mm, but uh, is an, a way to mm, uh, is a experimental way, but is technically it's interesting for um, for uh, a different uh, uh, organization, not uh, not for example server server client, but uh, peer to peer. And uh, I think uh, mm, a good yeah, experiment. Yeah, it's a good experiment. It's a technical implement, uh, in, in implementation. So maybe Nate from from a more academic, theoretical, discursive uh, environment. What what would you I imagine? Uh, maybe in relation with uh, feminist data politics or? Yes, I think. What I'm trying with writing my PhD in this collaboration is already this kind of experiment on whether this could work, uh, bridging like the academic and the and the activist. And um, yeah, so what I try to do is I hope to contribute in some ways uh, also uh, with the theory. One thing that really interests me are data politics. Uh, uh, ways of handling data, uh, imagining data relations uh, that are different from the dominant paradigm of extractivist data capture. So, I don't know, I just take this moment to maybe also uh, talk about the uh, server-client uh, relationship that was asked about earlier. Um, Following the, the data manifest no, uh, which says that feminist data politics are a refusal of an inher inheritance. And part of this inheritance is this uh, language and concepts that are used to imagine and create relations between users and hosts and devices and systems. And yeah, so the, the server client relation is problematic because it's it's binary, it's patriarchal, and it's commercial. And um, so what I observe is feminist servers and techno infrastructures and trying to work around those roles. 
and invent new ones. And there is this very beautiful uh, manifesto, and I'm not sure if it's online anymore because uh, the free tech co-op cafe was uh, shut down. But it's um, it talks about the refusal of commercialized hierarchical idea of services, and it invites us to shift uh, from the concept of uh, services towards mutual aid and communal gathering. So, yeah, this is kind of what I do also as a researcher collaborating. I'm trying to look into how uh, techno-feminist uh, collectives organize themselves differently and, and create those emancipatory relationships between women, trans, non-binary people, men also, but uh, data and, and machines and, and other collectives. And um, yeah, so this is already, I think, a, a, an experiment to form this kind of alliance also with the university that can has some resources that I can also uh, lay on the table. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice, I think, with our last question that you already opened uh, to the audience and you make immediate uh, 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 aligned allies <laughs> uh, with the audience. Maybe it's also still nice, uh, before we go more official to the uh, questions, is to hear uh, Mallory on uh, the uh, Im imaginative part on the policies uh, which could uh, empower our feminist pedagogy. Is it a is it a question that was in the chat? Um, I know it was not still one of our official questions: uh, how to uh, oh, empower. Yeah. <laughs> okay, no, I understand. But if you want I'm to react, yeah, yeah, if you want to react on a question which was in the chat, it's also good. No, no, it's okay. Thanks for reorienting me. No, I I guess I I sort of said in my last intervention where I think that we do sort of sometimes need things to work on together, some moments of activity and you know projects. Um, so I'm really hoping to find something that, that, that work that, that does that. I think there are so many out there and we think of them, I think as, as maybe sometimes lasting forever, but they don't. Um, and so I wonder if we can, um, maybe iterate on that model sometimes by knowing that, you know, we're going to do something together for a short time and then we're going to get back to our day jobs or our, our lives and things like that. So it doesn't take so much pressure on keeping some things that are meant to be temporary more permanent um but knowing that the movement itself is what's permanent and we strengthen that by having um flutters and flurries of of short-term activity that that gives us inspiration and gives us um you know data and research that gives us credibility and that sort of thing so i'm um you know i'm interested in that and, and of course any sort of ongoing research that looks at um Internet and internet protocols is definitely within um, ongoing work for me as part of the internet research task force. So folks doing that should should reach out and figure out how we can help to give a platform to that work um, and, and make sure it's visible. Thanks. And Maddie, Thanks, you still? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, can Maddie and, and quickly? Uh, well, I've nothing really to add. I mean, uh, events are always welcome, and uh, but in these times of COVID and so on, I uh, just uh, insist with the open source project. So we can what we do is not only for us, and I really believe in 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 this. And so, just publish and use what our colleagues are doing. Yeah. And maybe it's then the moment to see what were the questions inside of this chat, but because I think there is also a lot of uh, colleagues there. Uh, can you paraphrase some of the questions, uh, Mara, which were uh, circulating through the chat? Right. Uh, I cannot hear you, Mara. Can you open your microphone? 
Sorry, yes. So, uh, well, as the first question about the uh, servers, uh, I, don't, I wouldn't uh, call them gendered. Uh, I don't know uh, if this is something uh, we are focused on this panel. This gendered is also binary. Uh, so the question was if, the, if, we, if it's necessary to have gendered servers in terms of uh, more privacy, privacy. And the other one was about sovereignty. Uh, if the, if the concept of sovereignty is related to our uh, panelists. Um, I can answer those uh, questions quickly. So yeah, I also wouldn't call them gendered uh, servers. They are feminist servers, but they are techno-feminist in that they uh, make apparent the issues of that come with a gendered reality. Even like it's often binary gendered, but there, I think there's also non-binary genders. Um, yeah, and I think we also uh, went and explained a little bit of um, what these servers are and what spaces they can offer and why they're necessary. And um, yeah, I even mentioned it. I think then uh, data sovereignty is, uh, I think, uh, used in many different contexts, um, but it's an important uh, um, principle that I think is, yeah, helps us to grasp with the issues of privacy in a way that really uh, looks into uh, communities to empower them. It's, yeah, on a communal level, it's, uh, there is a, a, a discourse around uh, indigenous data sovereignty. And um, so, yeah, it's, um, it connects. And Andrea, would you like associate like the work you're doing with uh, building of the community networks uh, uh, as a sovereign practice? Mm. Okay, uh, sovereignty is a it's a problematic word. I um, I work in uh, inclusive community. So, uh, sovereignty uh, in the political term is, uh, in philosophical term, is something to express exclusion. Who has the, the right to exclude others? Uh, so, it's a problematic word because uh, I... I build uh, uh, inclusive uh, communities and uh, that uh, take the responsibility of uh, transformation and uh, insight. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, we use uh, inside of a community of farmers and uh, we use the term uh, um, uh, um, Sovereignty of uh, eating, so food sovereignty. Sorry, <laughs> I'm missing the words um, because they come from uh, the, the Via Campesina and uh, South America because it was one of the first uh, uh, the first concept used. But I think so we have to move on a, another term, uh, another words. Um, I saw people popping in and out with the cameras. Uh, I think it's because the bandwidth was a little bit uh, clogging. Uh, was there, uh, Mara, another question? Uh, and then maybe we can uh, finish uh, this uh, uh, moment. Uh, yeah, there was uh, one more question. Uh, would feminist Internet of Things uh, devices, for example, be less designed to gather all our data and track all our movements? Would it be more considerate to protect our privacy, uh, this type of, uh, yeah, let's say, feminist uh, devices? And also, I guess, if there is any research no, uh, made by women uh, on uh, this topic of uh, tracking, yeah, 
I guess from a, you are asking the person who asked this from a feminist perspective. Yeah. I I think uh, Andrea wants to say something yeah. about it. Oh, uh, um, sorry, it was uh, Anne, Anne. Or no, I don't understand. Anne, Andrea, it's a bit confusing. I think it's Andrea. <laughs> Andrea. Yes. Um, I think so that uh, the a lot of work was done uh, on digital rights, but uh, uh, we are still uh, like a prehistorical age because uh, um, uh, rights at the moment are not a matter that uh, the infrastructure uh, takes care of. Uh, so it's, not, it's like... Uh, mm, so it's every one of us as uh, to take care of uh, their uh, rights in the internet. And I not agree with this uh, perspective. Uh, it's like to say um, in a metaphor, uh, in this moment, the privacy is uh, giving to us uh, in the panorama of privacy. There are a lot of tools that are tools that the user can use. And uh, I'm not agree with this perspective. I think so that the uh, uh, default is a privacy in the internet, but in the, this moment is abuse is the default in the internet. And uh, if you take care, uh, you have to defend uh, and uh, you have to use tools. And I'm, uh, I'm uh, disagree. Uh, um, but uh, I'm, we, we are living the same in the streets. Uh, if you want to defend uh, uh, yourself, you have to walk, not walk alone and, with, and stay with your friends. And um, I think uh, it's a really uh, bad uh, position in this moment. Yeah, I would like to just add a little thing. I think the uh, data tracking and data mining is a capitalist, a techno-capitalist um, economy model. I mean, the, in, in, on the, in the question of how to sustain these infrastructures, uh, you see a lot of the issues. <laughs> how do you do it differently if you don't mine data? But I think that's the essential question, actually. Uh, there is, it we need to stop this uh, extravist uh, neo capitalist model and try to find uh, other creative ways of dealing with the um, economic situation. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I don't I don't see another from the public. If you have any other question, please know in the chat. There is a, a, we have a little bit time because uh, after us there is a break uh, live, so we are not really clogging the next uh, presentation. Maybe all I would like to add something uh, of to these questions uh, asked by the audience or to our questions in general? Uh, not specifically, uh, um, no. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, I was just like thinking like, okay, because like the, the session is quite condensed, one hour and <laughs> with, with all the work that we are doing daily, um, as in reflection and as in praxis. And I just wonder like, yeah, how, uh, and one of the cores of this, uh, how can we sustain uh, this uh, feminist internet? And um, I, there, there, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Uh, and it would be nice to continue these conversations on on other moments. I think, uh, but, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yes. um, because we still have a very precarious uh, situation. But for now, maybe I can just wrap it up. And or, or does somebody else still wants to uh, uh, have a last uh, word? Uh, well, I, I just quickly want to say that uh, the privacy concerns and uh, the problematics of uh, tracking uh, if, when it comes to feminist servers, I mean, feminist servers, they are uh, autonomous, at least at the moment, they are autonomous, mostly, uh, servers, 
I don't know American Feminist Server. If you do, let me know. So in that sense, being autonomous and anti-capitalistic, uh, in uh, inherited, embedded kind of politics. Uh, of course, there is no uh, tracking, uh, uh, how you call it, uh, mechanisms uh, in the work we do. Uh, we, our own servers or the family servers in general, we know about. Uh, and next to that, uh, to call it a bit more broader, uh, when, uh, when uh, we talk about servers, autonomous servers, uh, we uh, the, the users we can have, it's also a, a small pool of users. We cannot uh, scale up uh, to, uh, you know, to the big platforms like uh, Twitter or uh, uh, other similar uh, uh, platforms. So uh, being small and uh, uh, having the difficulties we want to host uh, makes the question between the users and uh, the sysadmins uh, much uh, more uh, flowing and uh, concerns can be resolved faster and also privacy, pri if, if either it's privacy concerns or trolling, uh, you know, uh, attacks online, etc. Yeah. So thank you all, all our speakers for their work and for uh, joining us. Uh, it was really interesting. Uh, we have the recording also on our uh, uh, peer tube where we streamed. <coughs> Uh, yeah, and maybe it's also important to announce uh, this, uh, this was part of this Affair New ID uh, project and the next thing uh, that uh, will happen is we will have some kind of residency on the server by Melchinery and uh, Melchinery is trying to develop a, a digital email server uh, that compiles access requests and puts pressure on institution to uh, transfer their relationship to access in specific for inclusion of uh, of disabled people. So that will happen in February and uh, till uh, uh, the project runs till end of uh, May. So uh, please uh, stay also with us uh, after this session. <laughs>